Hello everyone, today I wanted to go over the answer to the question of how does femur length impact a squat? So we're gonna go over some mechanical considerations here insofar as what will impact this, but what I'll say first is that um, femur length is really the one of only a bunch of different things that we need to consider when it comes to understanding squat mechanics. So what it really comes down to, and we'll get into the diagrams here in a minute, is what are the relationships between the segments of the body? And the main ones we're gonna look at are the femur, right? So the, the upper leg, leg bone, the lower leg bone in the tibia, right, the tibia and the, and the fibula, uh, the length of the spine and, and the trunk. Uh, and then in addition, things like ankle dorsiflexion, ankle range of motion, and hip range of motion. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to draw someone who has, uh, we'll say average size body proportions, you know, not too long of a, of a femur, not too long of a trunk, pretty much just somewhere in the middle. And what we'll do is we'll designate a line of force going right down. I know that's not perfectly straight, but going right down through the midfoot, right? The constraint of a, any kind of free weight squat makes it such that we are uh, limited in so far as uh, how low we can go because of the fact that we have the potential to fall forward uh, in this direction or fall backward in this direction, right? So if weight isn't over our midfoot exactly, we're going to be in a position where we're tipping one way or another. So I should really make this person's foot slightly longer. And again, forgive me for these uh, mediocre uh, 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 layouts. I just kind of want everyone to get the general idea of this. So when we're looking at femur length in a squat, we're looking at basically this bone that has a potential to pivot sort of in this direction and in this direction. And so what that essentially means is that as we lower down in the squat and as we start from the standing position to move downward, that bone essentially has to do some amount of pivoting. And the amount of pivoting that it does is gonna be directly dependent on how long the segment is. So the longer the segment, the more front to back distance that that segment moves. So if you picture, this is the femur bone that we're looking at. If I made that femur bone a little bit longer, right? What would have to happen if I sort of replace these two things, right? Pretend I move that one here. And again, I know it's not totally straight and I move this one here. What would have to happen as a consequence of this is my spine would have to move obviously backward with my hips. And as a consequence, uh, because my spine is farther back, this direction of force right here, this blue line would also have to move back. Now I can't actually uh, change the angle of uh, this segment right here. So what I'll do is I'll just actually uh, erase it and move it forward to where it should be which would be a squat that looks a little bit more like this, right? So realistically, what this person would have to do is if you essentially change the length of the femur from there to there, you would end up with a scenario where you would have to hinge over more. And the reason you would have to hinge over more is because this bone right here that we were just replacing increased in length. So what would happen if we actually did the opposite now? We took this back out and we put this, oops, we put this other femur back in. Right, so I connected that again. Now all of a sudden this trunk position, right, this guy right over here would have to change positions again so that I would connect there. But now all of a sudden, look what happens, right? So the reverse happens where, you know, I may still be able to balance somewhat if I, you know, hinged over to a significant degree, but more than likely what would happen is this person would end up being a little bit more comfortable in an upright position. Right, so hopefully we can see how the swapping of these two segments here and here changes that dynamic of the longer that this individual segment is, the more that this segment is going to essentially have to compensate for that by folding over, uh, um, again, to keep all this sort of blue line thing balanced over the middle of the foot. So when we're looking at other segments, okay, i.e. the shin and the tibia and the trunk, right, those are two segments that we are looking at in relationship to this one. Okay, so again, it is about the relationship between segments. It is not about the length of any individual segment, right? So when we're considering femur length and we're saying long femurs, short femurs, or something in between, what we're really saying is this is the length of this segment relative to these others, right? Because if I took this same long femur segment that we demonstrated over here and I just made the tibia ridiculously long and I made the trunk ridiculously long and then I drew the line of force, do, 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 do. And again, I know it's not perfect, right? Now look what happens is this individual who had this long femur here before, in this case over here, because I drew those segments proportionately so much smaller, had to actually lean over, whereas this person tends to stay much more upright. And why is that the case? Well, that's the case because this segment here and this segment here got proportionately much longer. So we can say, sort of to conclude in terms of just uh, uh, 
uh, a more clear takeaway, just in terms of the segments alone, that longer femurs relative to uh, the spine and relative to the shin, right? So relative to this segment and relative to this segment equals more of a natural hinge, okay? So this is the person who does the squat and who basically feels like they're going to fall over unless they have a significant amount of load on their back or in front of them, uh, and who even when uh, they do have uh, that, that high amount of load on them, what they tend to feel is they tend to feel like this is all back, this is all hips, and this is no quads. Now, the shorter femur, actually, I'll draw this over here. The shorter femur individual, the shorter leg, tends to be more upright, like this, and tends to feel pretty much all quads every day, all day. And the reason that's the case it really comes down to what this concept that we call torque, which, you know, this is not a video about torque, but we can think about torque as basically just uh, a force's effectiveness relative to a joint. So in this particular case over here on the left, if you look at the line of force, it's a pretty fairly even split between this segment and this segment. But if I went and drew someone down here who really had to hinge over in their squat, right? And maybe this was what they looked like, right? And this was their line of force, do, 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 down through the midfoot you can all see that this distance here to the hip is much bigger than that to the knee. So what this means is because there's a bigger distance to the hip, i.e. this distance right here, as compared to this distance right here, this is a more hip dominant variation. And we know that experientially because what we call this is basically a deadlift, right? And so again, just as a side-by-side -side comparison, if I took these same exact segments here, but all that I did was I just moved them to this side here and I took this one uh, I don't want to do that. And I took this one here and I moved it over here. So I've just essentially taken the spine and the, um, and the, uh, the tibia. If I took those two over there and I moved them to the right, and then I just really went to the extreme, went to the limit here and made this femur really, really short. And I tried to superimpose this trunk on top of this femur. You see how ridiculous that looks, right? So what I would have to do, move this trunk away. Sorry, stick figure. I would have to have a trunk that was much more upright so that I could balance that load directly over that midfoot. Okay, messy line, but hopefully we all get to point. So longer femur segments equals naturally more hinged, uh, again, as a relative length, and then shorter femur relative to trunk and relative to shin equals more naturally upright. Now, what really creates confusion in relationship to this is you may have an individual, you may have a client, you yourself may be someone who squats, who thinks that they look like like this, right? They think that they uh, sort of have these, let me get my pen on, they have these segments over here that make them you know, able to squat really upright. They look at the relative lengths of their femurs in relationship to the rest of the body. Uh, and they basically end up in a position where they think that they would be able to stay upright, but can't for some reason. And the reason that tends to be the case, usually outside of like a skill limitation, tends to be what's happening here at the ankle. So let's say that I have someone who, from a relative standpoint, longer trunk, shorter femur, can really squat upright. But instead of being able to get to this degree of dorsiflexion, what if, and again, dorsiflexion, just the closing of this angle, what if they can only get to a point where this angle down here is close to 90 degrees? All of a sudden, you take this same person, you move them over here, and they feel the whole time like they're just going to fall backward. Right, because again, if I had imagine I had a bar on my back, right, the line of force would be behind my heel. So that would be physically impossible. So what that means is if this distance or this angle is incapable of moving to a, a greater degree, what I would have to do is I'd have to move my trunk more sort of forward in order to be able to balance that load over my foot again. So the things again that make people naturally more deadlifty in this constrained scenario of a free weight squat are things like longer femurs relative to spine and shins. And then in addition, limited ankle mobility. And when I say limited, I don't mean that you should be trying to improve it, but rather that you are dealing with probably more than likely a structural scenario or some kind of limitation that makes you naturally uh, deadlift a squat more than squat a squat. So neither of these things, none of these things are really good or bad uh, necessarily. It's really just dependent on, you know, specifically what the goals are and what the constraints of the exercise you're doing are. So if your goals are to get better at doing a squat, well, then you're stuck doing squats and you know that's what you have to do. But if you are not set on just training the skill of a squat and you instead just more generally want to improve hypertrophy of things like quads and hips, 
Well, then you can choose exercises that for your anatomy and for your structure more easily allow you to do those things. So what is a better example maybe of an exercise that for a very long femur, uh, immobile angle human uh, might choose is something like a leg press. So if I get into something like a leg press and I have this super high capability uh, in terms of my adjustability to actually change where I'm putting myself relative to lines of force. And I introduce, let's say, um, you know, let's say this is like the, uh, the leg press pad and these are my hips right here. Uh, you know, I can maybe uh, imagine that someone could do a leg press, right? Who had longer femurs, who could just place their feet lower so that that line of force would sort of be traveling very, very far from the knee. So you see this huge distance. I know I did that quickly. You see this huge distance to the knee here, right? Relative to a, a more hip dominant variation, which may be like someone putting their feet up here and then the line of force trickling back. And now that's the distance to the hip. So I did that very quickly, but imagine this red line scenario over here is more of the hip dominant thing. And this blue line scenario right here is more of this knee dominant thing, right? We have the option to not have to worry about uh, uh, being restrained by our center of mass because there's this whole foot plate that is moving backward and forward that we can uh, essentially choose where to put our feet on. So in this scenario, although we are constrained in a different way in terms of our trunk and our hips, et cetera, we are not constrained to falling backward or falling forward as we might be in a free weight squat. So again, uh, neither is necessarily a better option, but all of these things are considerations when we're looking at relative uh, uh, segment lengths. Uh, and as a consequence of that, what kinds of goals are gonna be easier or more difficult to achieve. So hopefully that makes sense. If any of you have questions, definitely leave them uh, in, in the comment section. I'd be happy to expand on this or, or just make this a series to sort of tackle more specific topics more in depth.